Battalion of President Heading, maintain 3,500 till established on the localizer. Third, the ILS 32 approach. You guys know it's like a cliche, right? That flight instructors always say, more right rudder, more right rudder, more right rudder. So I'm going to talk to you about, like, I think this is a solvable problem. And to, I, you know, first of all, let me just clarify and differentiate. Today, we're not talking about the rudder use required to roll into or out of turns, right? So when you bank the airplane to turn it, you use rudder to, to offset the aileron drag. We're not talking about that today, but instead, we're talking about offsetting the left turning tendencies when you're in a high pitch attitude, and we're talking about offsetting the left turning tendency as you add power. And really, those are the only two times outside of the rolling into and out of banks that you're going to hear your flight instructor say, more right rudder, more right rudder. So there are three times that this comes up in, in everyday flight or you know pretty much on any flight. One is when you're climbing away from the airport. The other is if you happen to be flying slow in a high pitch attitude. And the other is when you come in to land, right? When you flare the aircraft. Let's assume you're not doing soft field takeoffs for the moment. So I didn't invent the Lindbergh reference. I'd love to say I did, but I made up the name because it's catchy and I want people to understand that this is a very, very important reference. It's something that you should remember uh, will control this left turning problem. Um, I used to call it the golden reference, but that wasn't quite as catchy as the Lindbergh reference. So for anybody that's not familiar with what I call the Lindbergh reference, it is that area in the forward windscreen. So right here where you look forward, just kind of sideways out through the forward window. I don't know if you can see it on my little model. I'm not talking about looking out the side window of the airplane, unless you're flying a Cessna 152, in which case if you sit way back, that actually ends up being your Lindbergh reference. But let's assume we're in a 172, one of the most common training airplanes. We're talking about looking forward, like we always do, but kind of sideways, kind of out the side of that window. Um, I call it the Lindbergh reference because Charles Lindbergh was, you know, famously said that he didn't need a forward window. He was an old airmail pilot and he used to fly biplanes with a giant bag of mail in front of him. Just picture like Santa Claus, those big bags of mail. And so where he would look is where the horizon hit the side of the bag of mail. Um, and my mentor, Richard, really emphasized how important that reference is. Um, in fact, Richard would also emphasize the importance of looking at the left wing from time to time, but we're not talking about that today. So um, something I'd like to clarify about the Lindbergh reference is I'm not talking about looking there arbitrarily. If you can see forward, if you still have a visual reference over the nose of the airplane, then use it. What I'm saying is as the aircraft pitches up and you lose your reference to the horizon, what I don't want you to do and what I don't want you to feel like you have to do is look straight ahead at the sky like, you know, there's no data out there. Forgot to turn off my notification, someone called. <laughs> Hopefully they don't call anymore. It's a holiday, don't they know that? So what I often see in pilots is as they lose the horizon forward, it's just kind of like you become a passenger. You're just sort of looking out at the clouds or sort of hoping you can't really tell if you're drifting sideways or anything like that. So the point of the Lindbergh reference is that you can follow the horizon down the curve. That's why Cessna sort of cut away the glare shield there. You can follow and you can see out that Lindbergh reference area. Just follow the horizon where it exists. That's the point, is that when you can't see forward, you don't have to become a passenger. You don't have to uh, guess at what's happening. You can see very, very specifically what is happening. You can see pitch, you can see yaw, and you can see roll right through that area. Now I mentioned that in everyday flying, this only comes up in climbs, slow flight, and flares, but in training, it comes up in a lot of other areas as well. Like for example, power off stalls, or slow flight, uh, minimum controllable airspeed. Really any time the nose of the aircraft pitches up and you can no longer see forward. So it's a very easy thing to uh, grab onto once you practice it. And let's talk about a couple ways that you can practice it, just so that if you're a CFI or, or you know, take, borrow what I'm gonna say right here, if you're a student, maybe bring this to your CFI. Um, I would bring a dry erase marker so that you can see very, very specifically what you're looking at and what you're looking for. 
But uh, two ways that you can practice using the Lindbergh reference that will be critical. Uh, one is slowing the aircraft down to minimum controllable airspeed so you can no longer see forward. Marking a little X in that window right there in the corner with a dry erase marker and you're not going to leave it on there too long so it won't stick but you just mark that little area and then experiment with it. Start by taking your foot off the rudder, watching the aircraft yaw and roll left, put your foot back on the rudder, stop the yaw and the roll. Do that a few times until you can easily identify, wow, when I let go of the right rudder, I can see all of the information I need right through that area. And by the way, if you are practicing stalls, what you'll notice is if you stop the yaw and the roll just by using enough rudder to stop it, and you pull the airplane into a stall, it will break straight ahead in most cases. Some airplanes are a little bent, but in most cases it'll break straight ahead. There won't be any dramatic wing drop in either direction. Um, so once you have that down, once you realize, okay, I know what I'm looking for. When I let go of the right rudder, the airplane yaws and rolls left. When I add the right rudder, it stops. Then do it with power. So pull the power out as far as you feel comfortable and then push the power in. I'm not going to say cram the power in, but push it in smoothly and with intention. <laughs> so like you're adding power for real. And what you're trying to, to offset now is the spiraling slipstream as it goes around and hits the tail. And this will do a couple things for you. One, it will help you identify what you're looking for. The second is it'll help drill into your body that your right foot and your right hand are connected. So every time your right hand goes forward, your right foot should go forward as well. Assuming you're not flying a Russian airplane, right foot goes forward as well to stop that yaw. And if you think about it as CFIs, what, what we're trying to get you to understand and what we're really looking for on checkouts and phase checks and check rides is that if you did inadvertently stall the airplane, like in a departure situation, that you would not let the left turning tendencies sort of get the best of you. So that if you did happen to accidentally stall, you're not going to spin. You'll maybe just break straight ahead and we teach you how to recover from that. So that's why as you climb away from the airport, your instructor's saying, right rudder, more right rudder, more right rudder, because you're controlling that left turning tendency. We want to make sure that you can do that. So if you go out to the practice area and slow the airplane down to slow flight or whatever it takes, <laughs> do chipmunks spin backwards also? Anyway, for any airplane that has a propeller that spins normally, you're going to add right rudder. So you slow the airplane all the way down to slow flight, minimum controllable airspeed, and then practice pulling the power out, putting the power in, pulling the power out, putting the power in, and just really balancing, trying to see how much rudder it takes to prevent the aircraft from yawing and rolling left. All right. You guys with me so far? No questions? All right. Good. So another thing that you can do, like we were talking about when you come into land is a time in normal flying where if you're landing properly, if you're really flaring properly and getting the nose wheel off the ground, for most people in most seat positions, you lose the forward reference. Again, I'm not saying you shouldn't use the forward reference, like you have your aiming point. Once you begin the round out and go into the flare, you transition your eyes to the far end of the runway, still looking forward. I don't want you to arbitrarily look to the side, look forward for as long as you can. What I want though, is that you feel comfortable enough to bring the nose up past where the horizon exists because you know where to look, you know how to follow the horizon. And that will help you protect the nose wheel and flare the airplane as much as you need to. Um, this may not be super critical in an airplane like a 172, but definitely when you get to the 182, this is a big problem. The 182 sort of sits up a little bit anyway, and <clears throat> it's very common for people to have three-point landings where they land on all three wheels. It's also very common for people to hit the nose wheel. Um, if, nose is crossed, if there's no crosswind, should I always hear the stall warning before touchdown? <clears throat> I think in a perfect world you should, so we're always striving toward the ideal. Remember the stall warning activates five to 10 knots above the stall. So if you're any faster than that when you touch down, yeah, you're, you're definitely going too fast. Now you wanna put the wing in a position where it's pretty close to, I'm not saying you have to full stall the airplane onto the runway every time, but you don't wanna to touch down with that much energy in the wings. Airplanes are hard to control on the ground. So, you know, in a perfect world, as you flare, it's kinda of like, you hear the stall horn and then second later, boop, boop, the wheels hit. Um, that would be a perfect landing. Look up in the sky, there you are. 
Look up in the sky, there you are Floating like an angel on the air 